Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Pharmagist. Myself Dr. Haimavati. I hope you are all doing well. And in today's video, we will be discussing about force fields, the different aspects associated with the force fields. So what is their importance and what is their purpose? And before beginning the video, let me tell you, I also have a website named as www.chemgenie.org. So if you are interested in knowing more about uh, computer aided drug design, you can visit my website and I have written some blogs also over there. You can read the blogs and uh, you can know more information about me and my work. And if you are interested, you can also join my Facebook group and Telegram channel. I have given the links to join the group in the description. So please do visit the description, check the description. And if you are interested, you can join my Facebook group and Telegram channel. Now let's begin our video. So I have made a, a small meme I once again. So what is molecular dynamics? So I think uh, you people keep watching movies. So it's a meme created from Robo 2.0 and KGF2. So molecular dynamics is a very typical topic everyone knows, which has a number of things like uh, charges, topology, analysis, minimization, production, etc. etc. So there are a number of challenges associated in learning and running molecular dynamics. And what a computer aided drug design specialist or a student like you should be. So whatever be the problem associated, we are ready with the information and knowledge we have with the softwares. So I hope you like it. And I made another meme also. So similarly, I got that even computer aided drug design is a very complex subject. On the surface, it may appear simple, but it has a number of uh, subdivisions like drug design, structure based drug design, ligand based drug design, homology modeling, docking, dynamics, quantum mechanics. So the list goes on. So like Robo 2.0, there are many, many triggers which are firing at us and we should be ready. So whatever be the problem, we are ready to face with the knowledge of the theory and softwares we have. So I hope you like it. So now let's begin our topic, force fields. So what is force field? It is a description of multidimensional energy surface of a molecule. That means it describes, it gives the complete picture of a molecule in all its conformations. Uh, so you can simply say that it is used to describe the molecular structure. And examples of some force fields are MM2, MM3, MMFF, these are used for small organic molecules and for amino acids and proteins we have amber force field and we have OPLS uh, force field for proteins again and there are number of other force fields also like Gromax, uh, Gromos etc. And the force fields they are based on empirical methods. So what are empirical methods? So empirical methods are based on experimental values. So the empirical methods, they take the data from the experimental methods. The values obtained from the experimental methods are included in these force fields. For example, the bond length, bond energy, etc. And these force fields, they are also known as molecular mechanics methods. <coughs> and molecular mechanics is based on certain assumptions and approximations. So the first approximation is, it is based on Born-Oppenheimer approximation. So what is Born-Oppenheimer approximation? So Born-Oppenheimer approximation, what happens is, we ignore the electronic motion of a molecule and we consider only the nuclear motion of a molecule. So for example, you know, uh, a molecule, it has a nucleus in the center we and surrounded by electrons evolving around it. So in this uh, molecular mechanics methods, what happens? We ignore this electronic motion and we consider only the nuclear motion. This makes the calculations faster so that we can uh, 
predict the energies and calculations related to the molecules in much faster way and another assumption is uh, these molecular mechanics are based on Hooke's law and this Hooke's law it is used to describe the contributions of interactions within a molecule now coming to uh, a simpler description of this force field so we can in force field what happens is we consider the molecule to be a collection of balls so here you can see this this image so the molecules which are made up of these atoms so these atoms are considered as balls and which are connected to each other in with the springs so each atom is connected to another atom in the molecule with springs so what happens when they are connected to each other with springs they move from the moment so this is also an assumption it is not like that it will be exactly the same so we can expect that there is an uh, the movement of the molecules is like wobbling so they keep on uh, wobbling around so molecules are always dynamic they are not static so they keep on moving and this movement is like wobbling of the molecules so i have made a here a, a small animation to describe the wobbling moment the movement is a bit slow so this animation i have made it on my own so just uh, to describe that molecules they keep on wobbling from side to side and now coming to the force field equation so force field is defined in the form of an equation and it consists of two parts one is functional form and the second one is the parameters so the functional form is given by the energy equation so the energy of a molecule is given by summation of these terms and these terms are the bonding terms and the non-bonded terms of a molecule. So the energy equation is given as the, energy, the total energies of the bonds, the total energy of the angles and the total energy of the torsions and non-bonded interactions and any other interactions which are present. So the detailed equation can be described in as this. So here V is the potential energy of the molecule and n is the number of atoms the k is the Hooke's law constant so here you can see the summation of the bonds and the summation of angles torsions and the non-bonded interactions they are given by the coulomb's potential and leonard jones, jones potential and the parametric form of the force field is the constants which we are using in this like ki vn sigma so all these uh, constants they are known as the parameters of the force field so there are uh, mainly two important components the functional form which is given by the energy equation and the parameters the parameters are the constants which are used in this force field now coming to the description of the functional form so the first one is the bond stretching so we know that the atoms are connected to each other by the bonds so when, when a bond stretching takes place between two atoms, the energy contributed by this bond stretching and then the energy contributed because of angle bending between the molecules, bond rotation, so the torsional angle. So when there are more than three atoms, so when four atoms are connected to other, there is a torsional changes taking place in the molecule. And then we have the non-bonded interactions that are electrostatic and Van der Waals interactions. So when there are more number of atoms in case of uh, polymers and uh, proteins, so DNA, they have more number of atoms where this electrostatic and Van der Waals interactions play a significant role. Now bond stretching is described by a harmonic oscillator equation and uh, sometimes by Mohr's potential. And the bond bending is described by the harmonic equation. So the both the bond stretching and bond bending, they are given by the Hooke's law. And the bond rotation is given by the cosine expression. And hydrogen bonding and Van der Waals interactions are described by Leonard Jones potential and Coulomb's potential. So in, in order to compute the energies of the molecule, this functional form of the equation is very important. 
so graphically this equation can be this uh, given like this so when you plot a graph between the bond length and bond energy so when you are changing the bond length what happens to the bond energy so this harmonic and uh, mohr's potentials they are mathematical functions which are used to describe the potential energy curve for the variation of the distance between two bound atoms within a molecule so in order to calculate uh, the bonded interaction of two atoms mohr's function is used and in this graph we can see that the variation of the potential energy of the bonded interactions of two atoms which changes with the distance between them so this line describes the harmonic equation which is given by the hooke's law and this is the cubic potential and this is given by the mohr's potential so the mohr's function generally the mohr's function use more correctly the how the bond dissociation takes place but it has the disadvantage that it is computationally very expensive and uh, force fields are not parameterized to handle bond dissociation so in order to overcome these disadvantages mohr's function is replaced by a simple harmonic potential which describes bond stretching by using hooke's law so hooke's law performs reasonably well in the equilibrium area so this is the equilibrium area so at the equilibrium area we can see that all the potentials are converging and if there are any anharmonicity corrections that means uh, when they are deviating from the harmonic equation so there is anharmonicity so in a, in case in such case the corrections they are given in force fields like mm3 mm4 and mmff which try to reproduce the bond length for small organic molecules with high precision so in a, apart from the equation potential energy equation which is given uh, before in the previous slide we can see that there are some corrections applied in certain force fields like the mm3 and mm4 which is developed by allinger and coworkers so in order to reproduce the bond length of the organic molecules now next part is atom types so the atom types play a very significant role so we said we are considering only the nuclear motion so the nuclear motion is given by the atom type of the molecule so atom types they allow in differentiation of hybridization state of the molecule in the local environment so we can see that uh, different molecules they have different environment for example if you take a benzene ring like this so in the benzene ring the hybridization of the benzene and the local environment is different when compared to a uh, carbon which is present in a alkene or alkene or an alkyl compound so the hybrid hybridization which is present here is different when compared to a benzene ring allinger and coworkers they are the developers of mm2 mm3 and mm4 force fields for small molecules so they have defined more than 15 different types of atom types for carbon alone in the mn3 force field for example like sp3 alkene sp2 alkene sp2 carbonyl sp2 cyclopropane sp alkene etc so when you are using more number of atom types this makes the force field to be applicable to a diverse set of molecules so next is uh, force fields they differ from each other in the number of terms in the energy expression so we have given the functional form of the equation so how many number of terms are present in the functional form of uh, equation uh, gives the difference between two different force fields so all the force fields they do not implement the same uh, energy expressions so they may be adding some more energy expressions or interactions of the molecule in order to make the uh, reproduce the molecular interactions and this increases the complexity of the terms and 
the way in which the constants are obtained are also important that means whether they are obtained from experimental value or ab initio value so the parameters obtained are adjusted to correctly reproduce experiments generally they are thermodynamic averages and they are not of a particular geometry or conformation of the molecule under consideration so the values taken in the force fields are thermodynamic averages but not a conformation uh, of the molecule or geometry next important aspect in force fields is the transferability of parameters so uh, previously we discussed what are parameters so this set of parameters which are developed and tested on a small number of cases they should be applicable to a wide range of problems this is known as transferability of parameters for example uh, if you are developing data on small molecules you should be able to use it for much larger molecules like polymers or related molecules instead of defining a new parameter each time for each individual molecules so if you are developing a set of parameters for a small molecule it should be able to uh, replicate and be applicable to more number of molecules also and then the next term is cross terms so the interactions between two or more internal coordinates of a molecule is known as cross term so these cross terms are also sometimes included in the force fields in order to achieve optimal performance for example consider a water molecule so when you take the water molecule if you decrease the bond angle so when you decrease the bond angle what happens stretching of the corresponding ch bonds takes place so the corresponding bond lengths uh, they they will be keeping stretching in order to reduce the interaction between these two atoms on three atoms so this is known as cross term and to prepare this uh, video i have used the molecular modeling book by andrew leach and chemo informatics by gas teacher i hope you like the video so if you like the video do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you see you in the next video